Hi readers, we are back in fiction and that means back to thinking about characters and how they are complicated. I want to start by using one of my all time favorite complicated characters, Harry Potter. He's a pretty complicated guy. He has some traits that are pretty positive and some traits that are not so positive. He's typically known as being likable, kind, compassionate, brave, but he also is known as being angry, merciless, and sometimes violent. I want to show you a scene where he's doing these things. I just want you to think a little bit as to why. You might know this scene or you might be familiar. It's from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. In this scene, um, we see him face one of his longtime rivals or a longtime bully for Harry, really, Draco Malfoy. He's a history of teasing Harry Potter over the years. And there's a lot of different elements going on in this, in this scene as well um, that kind of leads him Harry to fighting Malfoy. So I want to show you some of it and I want you to be thinking about maybe these likable and not so likable traits and maybe the reasoning behind it. Maybe some explanations for Harry, why he does the things he does. Let's watch it together. Sectum Sempra. Katie was just cursed and in a really dangerous state physically for a while. Katie, how are you? I know you're going to ask, Harry. Because I don't know if you curse me. I've been trying to remember, honestly. But I just can't. That's Draco Malfoy. Here he sees him and immediately goes after him, assuming that maybe he's responsible for hurting Katie. You know what you did, Malfoy. You hexed her, didn't you? And so they fight for a few minutes until eventually. He uses Sectum Sempra, Sempra from that book he was reading, which is a very powerful and dangerous spell. As you can see, Malfoy is now on the floor, bleeding, nearly dead. So it makes you think, why did he do it? Why did he need to go that far? So today I wanna to teach you and start to think about this in books and stories that we were reading. I wanna teach you that readers, fiction readers have know that there are reasons why characters do the things they do and make the decisions that they do. And they also use some questions that are helpful, such as what pressures might the character, my character in the story be under? How might those pressures help me to understand the character's actions and decisions? I'm going to show you right now how I do this in a story that you've read before, Popularity. And I'm going to be thinking about how Will sometimes has, you know, some things that are pretty positive and some things that are pretty negative. And I'm going to be using some of what I already know about him. Will, he's observant, clever, funny, determined, but he also has some bad, bad stuff working against him. He's sometimes disloyal, ruthless, jealous, sarcastic. I'm going to look at the text and um, think maybe about how one of these negative traits comes out. There's a part that I'm kind of drawn to, and that's where he is um, 
making fun of um, Mitch, the guy that he's trying to beat out of the popular crowd. He's making fun of him. And um, I think that it's an example of him being pretty ruthless. Why don't you look at it with me and see if you agree and see if you can think about why. Is he, it, could he be under some pressure? Hmm, let's see. I could see my future, my boyhood itself, crumbling to dust. And as I heard the laughter and felt the heat of the spotlight upon me, I pointed at Mitch's yellow pants and shirt and said, someone else needs a mirror. You look like a canary, which is a bird. Then with the grace of a magician's assistant, I raised my left arm in a presentational gesture and said, boys, I give you Tweety Bird. And it was all over. As the volume of the laughter doubled, Mitch seemed to vanish. And the day, and that and that day on the playground, Sean Owen's laughter was heard for the first time. Sean Owen is the super popular kid that our friend Will has been trying to impress. In an instant, Mitch Brockman became Tweety Bird, and I, an absolute nunity, became somebody, and then somebody special, someone to seek out, someone to follow. Hmm. Let's just think for a moment. I think he's pretty ruthless here. I'm thinking that it's a, maybe he's under the, under some sort of pressure, for instance, um, the pressure of popularity, um, needing to stand out as being unique and special. Maybe he feels like the only way to really do that is to, to be mean. And that could be maybe a reason why he acts this way. I'm thinking also about maybe a decision he makes and why. Maybe um, he's just so sick of his friends. I remember from the beginning of the story, he has these two friends, the two Allens, that he really doesn't like. So maybe it's just like this loneliness of not having a lot of friends has gotten to him and making him want to do something about it and take action. Maybe you have some other ideas as well. It's important to think about characters in this way and to think about how they do things that are not always so great. And sometimes there are reasons for that. Just like how Harry may have been under some pressure, for instance, wanting to stop Malfoy under the pressure of a really evil book that he learned the spell in and wanting to use it. Maybe the pressure of not being strong enough for the hero that everyone hopes he is and wanting to you know, prove everyone wrong. We can find those things by really pushing ourselves to ask, okay, what are the unlikable traits? And where do I see that in the text? And then what pressures might this character be under? How might those pressures help me to understand the character's actions and decisions? So when you go off to read today, you might be first on the lookout for traits, the likable traits and the not so likable traits. When you find the things that are not so likable, stop and think to yourself, what pressures might the character be under and how are those pressures helping you to understand the character, what they say, what they do, what they think, what they feel, what they decide. Thinking about texts and characters in this way will push our thinking even further to help us see even more in stories, to learn even more from our characters. Characters aren't perfect. They're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be beings that teach us stuff and they only really will do that if we allow them to make some mistakes. So have some fun today reading on about your characters and your stories and remember to jot in a way that I can see it and that you can share it with people later on today in this class and in the future.